Okay. Hello. Welcome to the IPFS weekly call where we get to see the cool things that are happening in the IPFS community. And today, Terry is going to talk about uh, ProtoSchool's launch. Um, before we get to uh, Terry's presentation, which is the main presentation of the day, um, I would like to make an announcement. We have community calls. Um, I can put that in the chat. So we have community calls every Thursday at um, 4.30 UTC time. So if you're interested in learning about um, what the community team is doing, um, how are we working to build like stronger ties with uh, everyone in IPFS, uh, please join, the more the merrier. So I will check to see if there are any announcements? It seems like there are any announcements, but what I would like you to do, if you're part of this meeting, if you can just put your name in um, our uh, notes, that would, I mean, in our notes, that'd be great. So you have a list of our participants. All right. Um, so without further ado, we are going to start with the main presentation, which is going to be presented by Terry about Proto School. This is very exciting and I can't wait to hear it. So uh, Terry, please take it away. Okay, can everybody hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Awesome. I sound more like a human than a mouse today, but for those who missed my last presentation, I'm recovering from laryngitis, so my apologies for the crackle here. So I'm really excited to introduce Proto School. Um, Proto School is an educational community that teaches decentralized web protocols, tools, concepts, and we do it through online tutorials and local chapter events. So you can see I have a deck here for you, but I'm actually gonna jump out to the website to show you some of this. Um, so let's start with the online tutorials and I will pop over to the website so you can see that. So the really the heart of Proto School is these interactive tutorials, almost all of which use code challenges. So as an example, this is uh, kind of the introductory lesson that we have to IPFS, the first one that really starts talking about that. And you see that you introduce a new concept in each lesson, and then you're asking the user to complete a code challenge. So for example, with this one, I see that my goal is to add a node that has test one. So when I try to do that, so let's say I do it like this and hit submit. We're giving feedback to the user. This one is actually quite useful. Some of the feedback is not as clear as that one. And then we try to submit again. We see that it works and we're invited to move on to the next lesson. So this is built in a way that we can do the lessons right in the browser, um, get feedback as we go. You, you may have noticed that it's also caching our code as we go. So if I return to this page later in the same browser, I'll have the same stuff stored here or I can reset the code. Um, and this makes it really easy for people to follow along. And you'll actually see that there's also a kind of status here of how far along I am in my lessons. You'll see whether you've completed one or it's in progress or so forth. Um, <clears throat> so we're really excited about the, like, the format of the website. We have a few tutorials to start with. And I do just want to point out for anyone who's not yet familiar with IPFS or who are the decentralized web in general or knows people who are still trying to get their head around those concepts. This first lesson here on decentralized data structures is new and does not have any code challenges. So people who are not developers should be able to walk through it and just get some introduction to content addressing, CIDs, hashing, those kinds of concepts that make the decentralized work and help explain why we'd want to use it. Um, so let me... Up back over here for one second. So you'll notice that the content that we have right now on the website is primarily about IPFS, but this is meant to be a site that's about the decentralized web in general and various protocols. So whether that's IPFS, IPLD, libp2p, multi-formats, Filecoin, um, projects beyond that, we're really interested in helping people understand what's 
possible on the decentralized web and give them the tools they need to get started in, a, in an environment that's not intimidating. Um, this is the beginner lesson I mentioned. And one of the ways that we can make this feel less intimidating, we think, is with local chapters and local events. So we actually had our first event on Friday in Denver. Local chapters around the world are hosting live events that use those tutorials as curriculum, but have mentors available for support on site. So chapters operate independently, but we have sort of a support system in place. So each of them gets its own repo in our org where it can share chapter info, host discussions, list upcoming events. And that because of the structure of our repo, that also means that a, a chapter can choose to use GitHub pages to build a website, which will then end up on our domain, which is a nice feature that has not yet been taken advantage of. Um, so let me pop out for one second. Actually, I'll stay, let's see. Keep walking you through here. So some ways you can get involved and I'll, have hopefully a little bit of time for questions at the end, but a few things I'd really invite everyone on this call to do. The first is just explore the Proto School website and share some feedback. So for example, if you're going through a specific lesson at the bottom of the page, you'll see a customized link to submit feedback. That link knows what page you're on and can help you start filling out that issue. Also, if you go, this is, you'll see we're in the Proto School org and then the protoschool.github.io repo. If you open a new issue, there are templates to help you do something like get lesson feedback, request a new feature, report a bug, and suggest a new tutorial. This is one of the things we need help with is figuring out what are those next pieces of content. One of the ones we're excited to do next is a lesson that works with the, um, the file API so that people can see how to manipulate files as opposed to just seeing how to manipulate data objects. Um, so that's one we're excited about, but we're open to Hello, new, everyone. Suggestions, new suggestions for tutorials and, um, and, and volunteers who are able to help us build those. And you can find information on the website under the build tab about how this, how the tutorials are built. Uh, one of the biggest tasks for people who are, who are game is to start a local proto school chapter. But what does this entail? It's important to understand kind of what, what you're signing up for if you do that. So as a chapter organizer, you'll be organizing local chapter events. Like I said, using the tutorials as curriculum and providing mentors. Um, if everybody could hit your mute button, that would be awesome, please. It, you can, so organizing chapter events is a big piece of this. And you're running those events independently with the chapters. We're, we're really committed to making sure that our, our chapters have autonomy to lead their events. Um, you have a repo to maintain. That's a great place to use the issues as a place for discussions within your chapter. Um, you can add, essentially add the people who come to your events as members of your, of your repo as a way to then communicate them with easily, share announcements about events, et cetera. There is an overarching code of conduct for Proto School to encourage us to create a, a vibrant and inclusive community um, where everyone's treated with, with respect and feels very welcome. But as a chapter organizer, it's your responsibility to make sure that your specific chapter, both the repo and the events, has a code of conduct that you're responsible for enforcing. And then this is optional but highly recommended building a chapter website. As I mentioned, with GitHub pages, it would be very easy to do that and host it at our domain. But I, but I can envision that there are some chapter organizers who will want to just use their repo as the website, just make a nice, complete readme, use discussions there. There are some folks who might already be running a meetup. For example, I know we have IPFS meetup organizers around the world who might just use the repo and then link to their uh, meetup page as the place where events would be announced. So it's up to you the format that you want to take with this, um, but note that that chapter website is made easier by the github pages option and you can find complete instructions for setting up a chapter in our github repo and then the other thing you can do is just help spread the word so we're proto school on twitter you can help share the message and extend our reach there um, i wanted to leave some time for questions and also invite michael to jump in if he feels there's something i've missed michael along with me is one of our um, maintainers of the project. Um, anything you want to say, Michael, before we move on to questions? Nope, you got all of it. You can. Cool. <laughs> okay. 
All right, excellent, thank you. Yay. Okay, now it's time for questions. Um, if you have a question, you just leave it in a chat. That'll be great. You can put your name in the chat. Yeah, so the first question we have in there. Sorry, the oh, it's Victor. First, yeah, Victor. Victor uh, could you please tell us what your question is? I know we can read it, but you say it out loud. Victor's on mute. His question is whether Proto School is supposed to replace existing IPFS meetups or whether they're complementary. And I'd say that they're complementary. So I think there are some folks who are running IPFS meetups who probably have guest speakers coming in talking about a whole wide range of subjects. Um, the, uh, in essence, a Proto School event is going to be walking through one of our tutorials with those mentors in place. So there's a great place for both of these things. If you run an IPFS meetup, maybe you'd want to have you know, every other month, instead of having one of those guest speakers coming in, you're using a Proto School tutorial as your curriculum. So these are things that can go together or not go together. People can host Proto School events and use Eventbrite to advertise them or just advertise them on their repo. So they don't have to go hand in hand. Hello. Um, and yes, there's Jim? sit down workshops, as Michael mentioned. Jim? As my question is, is Proto School going to extend beyond uh, Protocol Lab sponsored decentralized web projects, for example, uh, DAT, Secure Scuttlebutt? Um, yeah, we're, well, I, we're... Okay. go ahead, Michael. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to say, like, you know, we, one of the reasons why we called it Proto School <laughs> was so that it could really be about any decentralized protocol. I think that like we we do eventually want to have sort of a tree of curriculum where you have some foundational knowledge and then it you know branches off and, and goes into different directions and some of those will definitely go in the direction of things that are not PL sponsored technologies. I think it's still sort of an open question though about like what is the scope. Um, for instance, like our, our current initial tutorial is just about content address data structures and sort of closes with talking about sort of CIDs as like a way to build those content or data structures. And so right now, if you were to add something for SSB, for instance, you just wouldn't have like a root node in that tree of knowledge. And, and, and so you'd be missing a lot of context there. Um, but you know, like if you wanted to add a tutorial about, you know, working with Ethereum data, like, or, or working with uh, Bitcoin data, or, you know, eventually working with that data, because I, Jim has even been working on like a, a CID um, for, for the, for the DAP protocol, right? Um, so as long as we, we can sort of fit it into that tree of knowledge, then we're, we're fully open to technologies outside of protocol labs. Yeah, and if you have any suggestions, um, open a new issue with the template that's about proposing a new tutorial and we can start talking about ideas there. Alan? Oh, I guess it's more of a comment than a question. Uh, Dan? <laughs> Dan? Hey, sorry. Uh, so I was wondering, are we going to be generating everything on Proto School for Proto School, or will we be linking to external resources that we think are you know, curated really, really well? Uh, Michael, stop me if you disagree, but my, like, the way I envision it is that we will be building all of these tutorials within the Proto School site, and as we go, we'll be adding some functionality. So, for example, right now, you can't build a tutorial that uses you know, that lets you upload a file and then manipulate it. But that's the next thing on the list is to make the site capable of doing that. The place where I think external links can help is that we want to keep, keep content brief, right? So linking from a word out to an amazing description of the concept that's behind it, things like that I'm envisioning. I haven't envisioned what you're describing, Dan. Michael, what's your take on that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like you were saying, th there's a lot of um, sort of good documentation work uh, happening and even planned uh, in the future around sort of IPFS and, and Filecoin and a bunch of other stuff. And we don't want to recreate all of that documentation, so we'll definitely be linking out. But I think the sort of follow along tutorial stuff, we will keep that contained inside of the same Proto School site and not be sort of linking out to somebody else's follow along tutorial. Um, the the 
the origins of a lot of these ideas come from uh, Node School, and like I worked a lot on, on Node School and really followed that community as it went along. And um, one of the, the challenges with Node School was always that like the content was so um, disintermediated, and so you couldn't create like a, a very good tree of curriculum because it wasn't clear how these things connected to each other, and you really had no like you didn't have a very good understanding of um, where people were were falling off in the process, like where they were learning something and then tried to learn something else and then weren't able to. And so having things all contained inside of this one experience really helps with that. Um, and also, you know, as we add all these features, like, you know, saving your code as, as, you, as you come back to it and saving like where you are in the tutorials, like Terry was saying before, like we can't really do that and create a unified experience across like multiple websites. So we're, we're trying to contain all of that there. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. You know, one thing, Terry. I'm sorry. Sorry. One other thing I forgot to mention as I was walking through that is um, the the way that we have the repo set up allows the organizers of various chapters to pool their knowledge. So, for example, Dan, who's on this call, led our first uh, meetup in Denver on Friday, and he might have suggestions for other organizers about what worked well and what didn't in that in that um, experience. So. I'll just share my screen for one more second and pop you guys back into the repo just to make it clear if anyone wants to check this out. So the org name is Proto School. And then in here you'll see two repos pinned at the top. So protoschool.github.io is the website code, and that's where you would go to look at the issues that we've identified, uh, little tweaks we want to make to the existing site, or big tweaks, new lesson ideas, et cetera. But the other main repo here is the organizing one, and that's where you're going to find the information on how to start a new chapter. And that's where you would open an issue to request your new chapter. And then the other repos that you see here are the repos for each of the existing chapters. So I will stop that share, see if we have hello. more questions. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Uh, my name is Don. I would like to ask. Uh, what about collaborations between different schools of, uh, from, you know, from uh, ITSS uh, chapters all the way to other schools, colleges, or educational centers? Is that okay? Between, uh, it's definitely okay. It, it, it definitely, it hasn't really happened yet. Because, you know, we, we just got everything up, but um, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, use it, that'd be awesome. Yeah, because in, in Hong Kong's case, it didn't really gel well with IPFS recently because of the news. Uh, does anybody know what happened uh, in in Hong Kong with IPFS? I just 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 to ask uh, for the sake of context, I'll I'll tell you if you don't know. Is that there? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, we don't. People like us. Yeah. Uh, in 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 Hong Kong, about. Uh, about a um, um, a week or two ago, no, about like a, at Christmas time, around Christmas time, is that somebody was throwing money out the window and uh, and a lot of people causing a lot of mayhem in terms of the person who was creating fake file coins and tarnishes and his behavior tarnished the name of IPFS. And I was thinking, what is the fastest way to rebuild the image of IPFS in my region? Just that's that's the thing. So maybe find some private organization to collaborate and stuff like that. So that that's definitely a a broader <laughs> question than we can answer uh, j just with like Proto School. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think Proto I mean, School is a start. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to ping me directly, like um, I'm I'm working on a bunch of the, the Filecoin community stuff now as well. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. Filecoin and FPFS are definitely separate. And then right. we, we view protocol, pro, or sorry, we view Proto School really as being a place to educate people on all of these technologies, not mm -hmm. just one. Um, so, so yeah, there, there, there may be a role to play here, but we should, we should sort of uh, think up offline about the best kind of way to do that and do approach that. Yeah, uh, considering that f the financial industry is a thing in Hong Kong, it's, it's kind of our forte. So there is a kind of cross between IPFS and Filecoin in our region, and we generally put them in the same basket. So there might be a different method of doing things. Yeah, let's, let's plan to connect offline about that. I see that Alan okay. had a question. Do you want to share that, Alan? Sure. So uh, I was just uh, thinking back to uh, when uh, I was doing Node School stuff uh, and 
I remembered that what Node School had was like a place where it was just actually just a GitHub repo, I think, with issues that you could post. Uh, if you were actually working on a tutorial and you got stuck for whatever reason, uh, I think you could just open an issue and ask a question about it and there'd just be people sort of patrolling that and uh, uh, and kind of answering questions from people who are actually doing the tutorials. And I just wondered if there was anything like that planned or available. So at the moment, the best thing to do in that scenario is to click the link at the bottom of your screen. So as I said, it's customized so it will know which lesson you're in and start filling in the issue. The challenge that we have right now is with the content being so new, we want to take the step of distinguishing between we did a bad job creating this lesson. It's super unclear. Let's fix the lesson versus, oh, this person is confused, which if they're confused, probably there's something we could do better with the lesson. So if you drop a question there, in some cases, the response might be, thank you for this feedback. This is great. You're right. It is confusing. Here's how we sort you out, but then we'll go back and fix the lesson and make it more clear. Um, I don't know down the road about the specific thing you're suggesting, but at the moment, that's that's the best place to do it. Uh, Michael and I have a tight eye on that main website repo, which is where those issues get logged. So we'd be catching those and asking other people for help as we as we see stuff there. And please, everyone should feel free to follow, watch the repo if you want to try to help answer some of those questions. You're more than welcome to. Yeah, we, we actually had a conversation about this very specific thing, Ellen. And like, if you if you look at each lesson at the bottom, it says if you're feeling stuck, like definitely say something here. Um, and we were deciding like, does that go into a separate repo or in the main repo right now? And basically, it's going in the main repo until there's enough of it, and we're confident enough that it's it's not the lessons problem, but people are just need some help. Yeah. Um, then it'll kind of then it will eventually probably break off into its own repo. But um, it's actually a really nice workflow because. You know, since everything is integrated into one website and we have all this knowledge, like when you click that link, it automatically fills out all of this stuff in the GitHub issue about which lesson that you're on and everything. So it's a really, really nice experience, actually. Cool, yeah, that makes Other sense. questions? Any other questions? Sorry, uh, just... Uh... Um, if there are no more questions, we don't have announcements today, but um, what I will say is I want to address Don's concern about Filecoin in Hong Kong. Um, think about it this way. IPFS, mm -hmm. libp2p, it is like the building block, and Filecoin is just one of the many things that um, IPFS is used. If you really yeah. want to get more people out there, um, they should, um, number one, look at Proto School. Proto School is a great start. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Look at the IPFS code base and look at awesome IPFS. Like there are many things um, that we use IPFS for in terms of, it's like the building blocks and just like getting it out there and encouraging mm -hmm. other people, encouraging students and encouraging community members to use the IPFS uh, different APIs. I think that would be an excellent start. I, I do think that that would be a good start if it's in the European and American case, but it's kind of a little bit culturally different here. And in generally speaking, we tend to be more finance oriented. I'm not, I'm not saying that we're all finance oriented. I'm saying that we tend to put innovation for the sake of the economy first. So this is why Filecoin is the, you know, the first and foremost of IPSFS representation. What so, I will say in that case, in terms of those nuances, I think that conversation is probably uh, best taken offline. I think you really a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but I know there are definitely student organizations in uh, Chinese universities that are using IPFS and other technologies mm -hmm. to like build stuff. But I think your point is um, valid and it's uh, something to take offline. And understood. Comment, understood. Yeah. But thank you everyone for your comments. Thank you for 